So day one, after Bobby Wagner visited the Ravens and still no deal yet as of this recording, uh, but it is also day three in a row of us being able to do questions from subscribers. So team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain Graven here with another episode. And what question from subscribers is, is a series where you can ask any NFL question you want and we answer in a video just like this. If you want to be a part of it, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. You can just send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, as always, we got some great questions. Let's do it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my home. First question came from my guy, uh, Michael C. from Henderson, Nevada. What's up, Mike? He said, how are you? How's the family? Oh, we doing great. We doing real good. Appreciate you asking. He said, question for you regarding uh, the Makari at center video. He said, if the Ravens try to move Makari to the center position, do we still draft Tyler Lindenbaum, the center from Iowa, with pick 14 in the first round? No, you don't. Um, something that uh, was pointed out to me, my, shout out to my guy, JT. You know, he always is dropping, dropping gems on me. He said, um... With Makari, with his deal, he's getting paid like starter money. So you wouldn't want to make, you wouldn't want to pay a backup that kind of money. Because <laughs> it just makes sense. And then somebody else um, in the comment section, Billy Bonds in the comment section, this this was even even better. He said, this may make sense on, on, on the Patrick McCarry video. He said, this may make sense on why they did not resign Bozeman. And he said they signed him during the season, Patrick McCarry, because we remember they signed him to that extension, yeah, during the season. Football was still going on. It was still in the middle of the regular season, and they did that. And he said you don't just sign players during the season and not think that they will contribute to the team. Uh, this makes me believe that Bradley Bozeman knew what would happen this offseason. Bozeman's offer for this offseason, we could have paid him that and some. That's true. That's true. And it was said that um, the Ravens did offer Bradley Bozeman a deal during the season, but his camp was like, nope, don't want it, don't need it. And Jeff Zrebic did clear it up. He said once free agency hit, Ravens were done with Bozeman. He said they were, they were done. They were past him. They were over him. They had moved on. So now that like a lot of this stuff has been said out loud and we've been seeing the way that the Ravens have been moving, it does seem like Patrick McCarry, he may be – the Ravens starting center moving forward. And I know like a lot of times, just in life in general, a lot of times people remember the bad more than the good. Because of course, we remember the Bills playoff game where Patrick McCarry, he tried to turn into a quarterback. He thought Lamar was his wide receiver and he overthrew him. Ball went over Lamar's head. Lamar went to go recover it, got whacked, head hit the turf, boom, uh, concussion. Out for the rest of the game. Um, but Besides that, uh, Patrick McCarry, he had actually did pretty good, as especially especially his rookie year. Like, especially his rookie year. Uh, he had done pretty good uh, playing center. And it just always, always takes me back to that, the, the game in 2019, Monday Night Football. <laughs> and Matt Skura goes out with his injury. Patrick McCarry steps in, and you don't even know that Matt Skura left. You ain't even know. Now, he does need to work on that strength because I remember in that Titans game in 2019, the playoff game, he was getting a little mud manhand a little bit. So he just got to hit the gym a little bit more. But Patrick McCarry, he could be the one. And by everything that's going on so far, like we keep, keep seeing people, J.C. Treader, J.C. Treader, J.C. Treader, even though he hasn't signed anywhere yet, like we ain't heard nothing about no J.C. Treader or really any other center uh, for the Ravens. So when you like really think about it, it just it makes a lot of sense. But as far as your question uh, for uh, the Dra the I was about to say the the Ravens drafting the Ravens drafting Lindenbaum, no, that I don't think that happens at all. If Patrick McCarry is going to be their answer. Next question came from my guy Cronall. He said middle linebacker equals Ravens Super Bowl. And Graven just watched a video about Bobby Wagner visiting the Ravens and realized that what the Ravens wait he's realized that wait the Ravens have won the Super Bowl when they had a strong middle linebacker. They ain't winning with C.J. Mosley. <laughs> they ain't winning with C.J. Mosley. Even Daryl Smith. They ain't winning with Daryl Smith. But anyway, let's keep going. Uh, he, he said, uh, 
we need that position the way the Ravens' defense is built to succeed and win. Well, yeah, he would certainly make the them a lot better. I don't think that if the Ravens get a Bobby Wagner, oh, that's the end all be all. And it's like, all right, Super Bowl we're on the way now. I, I've seen a lot of Ravens, well, not actually not not many, but I've seen a couple say, hey, hey, the Ravens, their culture is defense. Defense wins championships. I've seen a couple of people say that. I disagree. You can have and and Ravens are a prime example. Ravens have had good defenses. What has that got them recently? Nothing. Just, oh, the, the defense is ranked nice, which is great. But it's an, it's an offensive league. It's a passing league. You got to put up points. We know what the Ravens have been built on. But the Ravens, they got to make some changes. They got to make some changes in their whole philosophy moving forward if they are going to have any success, like real success. Not just, oh, yeah, we went. 10 and 6, well, 11 and 6, well, we went 12 and 5, oh, we went 14 and 3, that, that'd be nice, and those are some pretty records and whatever, but if they are going to have some significant success, philosophies have to get updated, you know how you got, you got an iPhone, and Raven, Ravens are like an iPhone, where you just like, you know what, you, you keep getting these notifications, all right, here goes um software 1.3. Uh, you know what? Nah, I ain't gonna update it. No, it's probably just gonna mess up my phone. And my phone's been working good. It can't do everything that all these other phones could do, but it, my phone's been working good. Yo, software uh 1.4 came out. An update. Um, nah, I'm good off of that. Software 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. <sighs> now we on 2.1. Uh, you know what? Nah, I'm going to just leave everything the way it is. My phone, it, it's, it's working okay. It's not working the best that it possibly could be, but it's, it's doing all right. I'm still getting by. It ain't the worst, right? But it's also not the best. Next two questions came from my guy, BB. He said, Engraven, what we saw last year was just a preview of what Rashad Bateman is as a wide receiver. I agree. Uh, his limited play with Lamar due to his groin injury and then Lamar getting hurt were key issues. I agree. Uh, also, his limited time on the field as g -Row didn't use him as he should have. I agree. Bateman is that guy if Lamar has protection. Bateman, Hollywood, Andrews can all be that number one if Lamar is given time. Got to focus and prioritize. Lamar is on a different level, but he can't do it by himself. This team in the draft and free agency has to retake the North and raise that Lombardi. Thanks for the channel and the team. Keep it clean, fam. Appreciate you, BB. Now, um... Lamar Jackson seems, I didn't even know that was Rashad Bateman in the little video that Lamar posted yesterday. I had no clue that that was him. Um, but it seems as if Lamar is working on his chemistry with everybody else. You see him working with Rashad Bateman. And, that, and that's only the videos that we do see. Who knows what's, what else is going on from what we don't see. Um, so he's, he posted a video of him and, him and Rashad Bateman throwing, well, him throwing to Rashad Bateman. He posted the one with him throwing a crochet. And it's like, oh, hold up now. That's a good thing. Reason being because, not to say he can't still work on stuff with them, but he got all the chemistry in the world with Mark Andrews. He got all the chemistry in the world with Hollywood. Those three, they, they got it. But if he can build that confidence and chemistry and rapport with the other guys, too, if he can build big trust with the other guys, too, that can make the offense go such a long way. That can really progress the offense so much faster if he can really build trust with the other guys like he has it in Mandrews and in Hollywood. So hopefully uh, that continues with Lamar. Um, now, he, BB also said the Ravens are a center. Well, maybe Patrick McCarry, but he's anyway, he said the Ravens are a center, left tackle, two defensive backs, and, a, and an offensive coordinator away from the Super Bowl. <laughs> he said the Ravens are a center, left tackle, two defensive backs, and an offensive coordinator away from the Super Bowl. I don't even know how to respond to that. Next question came from my boy Daryl D. He said, why every year free agency hears all I hear is the Baltimore Ravens take over for the 9-9 in the 2000s? Because I swear this team still thinks like we in the 2000s. They go out and spend money every year on defense like that's the only phase of the game. In 26 years, they haven't spent top dollar on offensive weapons. And when they had to, they traded Anquan Bolden to the 49ers. Make it make sense. Whew. Well, I mean, like we've been saying, we know like... 
like a lot of y'all been saying too, that's the Ravens' culture. Their culture is defense. What they've been built on is defense. What they know is defense. So it's but that's why I say it's time to upgrade this thing, man. It's time to change it up. And again, it's not saying that defense would be neglected, but offense needs to be much more respected. And they really should really go in on offense, quality over quantity. Because, again, I don't want to hear that, oh, well, Ravens, they drafted the most wide receivers over the past couple of years. Quality over quantity. Sammy Watkins, Dez Bryant, uh, Seth Roberts, they, they like, Ravens, they pick up these, and there's no offense to the players at all, but they pick up these cast-offs. And they're like, there you go. Hey, see, we did it. You guys keep talking about receiver this, receiver that. Boom, there you go. We got your receivers. It's like, did you really get them receivers? Or did you just check off the box to say, all right, hey, hey technically, we, we got you one, right? It may not be the best, but we did it, right? Next question came from Heritus. It said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the fam. Uh, this is actually my first question ever. Uh, I was wondering, how could the Ravens benefit from signing a Stephon Gilmore or Patrick Peterson on a short-term deal? Well, uh, well, let me read the, read the rest first. He said, their best days might be behind them, but they could really bring stability to our secondary with their veteran presence. What do you think? Is the cost of bringing these players in worth it? Uh, P.S. Hello from Sunny Cypress. Appreciate you. Um, Stephon Gilmore, Patrick Peterson. Uh, will give the Ravens an established veteran at the cornerback position who has had a lot of success uh, throughout both of their careers as a as pretty good cornerbacks. Um, it will give the Ravens some very, very high quality depth uh, when it came to their cornerback situation. It would allow them some flexibility and some, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just a little less pressure as they head into the season. Uh, with Marcus Peters coming back and Marlon Humphrey coming back from season-ending injuries. Um, and I, but it, it, it would not be a bad move for either one. Um, and who knows what's that like, because I, I, I didn't even know until like a couple of days ago. I didn't even know that Patrick Peterson was even a free agent. I thought like he was on like the Vikings or something. I don't remember where I thought he was at, but I didn't know he was a free agent. And I'm like, man, free agency, like, it's been some crazy trades, and it's obviously been a lot of moves here and there, but for a lot of veteran players, it's been very quiet. You hear Bobby Wagner, nothing yet. Of course, he visited some places. You see Julio Jones, nothing yet. And then Stephon Gilmore, Patrick Pete, nothing yet. Well, at least as of this recording, this is 4.15 on Saturday. So, I mean, I don't know. But, I mean, that's what they could bring to the Ravens, though. They could bring um, stability. They could bring, like, a nice just-in-case option because, uh, you know, Ravens secondary, they always get tested every year. So if you got a starter as a backup, then that will put you in pretty good shape as whoever you end up losing uh, could recover and you get them back, hopefully. Hopefully you don't lose nobody, really. But that would give you, like, oh, somebody went down. All right, you can step in. Next question came from my guy Frank. He said, Hey, Graven, hope you and the family are doing well. Love watching your daily viz and keeping us in the loop with all things Ravens related and all the news. Hey, I appreciate it, man. So I'm really, I'm, I'm really not understanding all the buzz right now about Lamar needing a contract extension. I thought Lamar's fifth year option was still in play. It is. Uh, I may be misunderstanding, but I don't know why the Ravens and EDC worry about his extension next offseason. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think. Thank you. No problem. It's the, the reason, let me tell you, just to be straight up, man. Um, well, we always straight up anyway. The, the reason the Ravens want this contract extension done so bad is because they want cap space. They want more cap space. This contract extension would, and also too, because the, the sooner you do it, the cheaper it's going to be. You, you wait, Lamar waits, they keep waiting this thing out, the cheaper it's going to be. But if... If, uh, yeah, I got to put an if on it. If the Ravens do really want to sign him to a contract extension. I know a lot of stuff has been said publicly. I, I, I know that. But anyway, if the Ravens do really want to sign him to a contract extension, they want that cap space. And again, they want it to be as cheap as it possibly can right here, right now. Because again, every week. <laughs> oh, every day, every new contract that comes out, Lamar's price just keeps going crazy.
Next question came from my boy David. He said, "Not this is not so simple question. Hey team, keep it clean. Hope all is well with the fam and the dog as well. This might be a long one. I had what seemed to be a simple question when I thought of it, but as it turned out, the more I thought about it, the more complicated it became. Oof, here we go. So, I am asking you, when it comes to this offseason, what should be the main focus of the Ravens? Offense or defense? Simple, right? Oh yeah, for me, it's simple. If that's a question, y'all already know my answer. It's offense, straight up. But let's see how it gets more difficult. He said, but not really. My initial thought was to make offense a major focus to try to keep Lamar happy and healthy. However, after thinking about it, we really only need a few small pieces to fill holes in the offense and maybe a young gun free agent wide out to keep the other defenses honest. Now, on to defense. We need an edge rusher on the opposite side of a way. Well, they, they do. They do. Because um, with Bowser, with him being injured, who knows how much time he's going to miss. Uh, with Dalen Hayes. Dalen Hayes, the jury's still out. We don't know how he's going to be on an NFL level yet because um, we didn't really get to see him last year. Pernell McPhee gone. Derek Wolf's coming back, but he, mm, yeah. Um, but Pernell McPhee's gone. Jalen Ferguson, I think he'll probably end up being gone too. So, yeah, they do need an edge. Um, he said, uh, oh, and interior line pressure. We need interior line pressure as well. Yep, that's true because... <laughs> They ain't have none of that. None. Um, he said, all of which can be addressed, but not necess necessary if the new scheme is one that adapts to opposing offenses and gets pressure. It seems that both sides of the ball are in need of major help in key positions, but what is more pressing and what is the more pressing and important issue? I'm not sure at this moment I am still leaning towards the offense just to keep Lamar in Baltimore and out of Miami. Ooh, I love that. That ending part. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry for the rant. God bless. Hey, what? Don't apologize, man. That wasn't no rant. You're just talking that talk. Um, I would still say offense. I would say offense. Um, and the, the reason I say offense is because, again, not to say those other things that you mentioned are definitely important, too. They are definitely important. But let's see. I, I, I wish the Ravens would have that. And, again, we know culture. But I wish the Ravens would have that same attitude that they have on defense, on offense. It's like you got a special thing. You, you got something that's, that's really, really special, a special talent, special players. Uh, just maximize on them. Really maximize on them. And I, I just wish they would get that superstar on offense, somebody in their prime on offense to, to really just help take this team over the top. I, I would love that. Mm. But yeah, but yeah, like you mentioned, as far as defense, those are uh, some some needs for sure. Now, what will help with those needs? Obviously, addressing them. <laughs> but like you mentioned, the scheme will be such a big part of that. It, it will be such a big part of that. How Mike McDonald runs this defense that can just change so much, so fast. But yeah, we still need the players to play. Countdown to the blow up. Uh oh. The last question on this episode came from my boy Rodell. He said, My guys, I always appreciate what you do, not only regarding the Ravens, but also the positivity you spread. Keep being great in life. Your words have touched many, including myself, as far as all uh, guys in purple. Please bear with me. Uh oh. <laughs> I appreciate you, but here we go, man. First things first, would you rather make two superstar signings in free agency, one on offense, one on defense, or would you rather take the Ravens' way and sign four to five cap cut guys? I'll do the superstars. I do the superstars because if you get those superstars, those superstars are game changers. They are difference makers. They make huge impacts on your team and on everybody around them and obviously on other teams, too, in a negative way for other teams, but a positive way for your team. Uh, they can make everybody around them that much better. Uh, I mean, see superstars that the Ravens have had in the past. I mean, obviously, most on defense, but Lamar Jackson, we know who we know about that guy, uh, but Guys like Ray Lewis, superstar, Ed Reed, superstar. And then you think about guys that were next to them, like Danelle Ellaby, Bart Scott, uh, Adelius Thompson. He, he was nice, though. And Bart Scott wasn't bad. And Danelle, th those guys weren't, they weren't bad, but they weren't superstars. But their play was Ella Will Demps, Gary Baxter, like Kerry Williams. The, all these guys' play was elevated due to them being around superstars. So... That would be my answer. But anyway, let's let's get back to the question. He said, I asked this because honestly, where is this team right now? Like when you really stop and think, where are they? Well, 
maybe some of them may be in Baltimore, some of them may be down here in Miami, some of them may be in Arizona, I, I don't know. But anyway, he said, uh, uh, when you really stop and think, where are they? Are they elite? No. Are they subpar? No. Are they trash? No, they're definitely not trash. Uh, are they rebuilding? No, more retooling. Uh, or is it a mix? To me, I, I think um, they are they are a good team. Not great, though, but they are a good team. Uh, hopefully they can be great this year, but right now they, they are a good team. Uh, who's who's right? Who's I mean, they, they could be a couple of moves away from doing some great stuff, but they would have to make those moves. But I would say they're a good team. Anyway, he said, uh, to me, it seems there's no clear answer and there may not be a clear direction either. I mean, you have a general ta generational talent at quarterback that's not even taken care of yet, which is cause to pause. Oh, I like that. Cause to pause. That's cool. Anyway, he said the best tight end coming off of the 2021 season, two top 15 cornerbacks yet. The success don't ring like the names we have. Oof. Boy, you dropping these one-liners, man. You got like 51 liners in here that, oof, man. So, with this two-part question, how far, how far away are we? I mean, is it a player or two, a coach, a drop pass, or is it time to blow it up? Um, no, I wouldn't say it's time to blow it up. But I, I say, um, well, actually, if, if philosophies didn't change, I would say it was time to blow it up. But this year is a big prove-it year for a lot of people. Um, John Harbaugh, uh, a lot to prove. Greg Roman, I, I think this is it for him regardless. Uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, how is he going to bounce back from last year, from it ending to injury? Uh, the Ravens front office, how are they going to construct this team uh, given this situation and, and everything that's happening around them in, in the AFC? Um, it's just, it's a lot. And we can go through different players too and different coaches and whatnot, but there's a lot of pressure on a lot of people this year within the Baltimore Ravens organization. Front office, personnel, players, coaches, all that good stuff. It's a lot of pressure on everybody. Um, so this year, it's not time to blow it up right now, but depending on how things go this year, even, I mean, you could have said this after last year, but last year, again, the injury, you had the injuries, but this is it, man. <laughs> this is it. Uh, anyway, he said, if we are healthy as 2019 and don't make the playoffs or lose after one playoff game, how atomic should the roster blow up be? Mm. Well, that'd be a mix of roster, be a mix of coaching as well. Yeah, so it'd be a good mix of both. But if they don't make if they don't make play oof, if they don't make playoffs, oh yeah. You 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 can expect to see some people be escorted out ASAP. You know that's happening. Well, I mean, actually, you don't know, but you kind of figure. Anyway, um, who should stay and who should go? Uh, this is why I say, how far are we? And is this consistent approach to free agency in the draft working? I don't think it is. Y'all, but y'all know how I feel. I ain't got to repeat it again, but we talk about it all the time. But no, th this the way that the Ravens have been doing things, it's not, they're not failing from it, but they also aren't succeeding from it. They're not. They're not this losing, sorry, garbage team. But they also aren't this great, amazing team either. So that's why I feel like things need to change. Both on and off the field. Things need to change with how the Ravens just do this, man. Anyway, he said, I feel like this team is just staying afloat. Oof. They are content with relevancy and being competitive I'm not sure contending is as important as being financially responsible and analytically correct. Goodness gracious, man, these one-liners. Boy, and they spot on, man. They spot on. He said, the teams that had success recently are contending now and tomorrow. The Chiefs live in the championship games. The Bills have more and more success every year. The Bengals took the league by storm and did what we were supposed to in 2019. And the Rams as well. Draft picks are a foreign language to them. As of March 25th, 2022, I feel no move we have made or rumored to make is the move to contend and not just compete. Is it just me? No. 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 Now, the Ravens, again, the moves that they have made are a start. They are a start. Uh, Marcus Williams getting the safety position uh, solidified. 
Uh, Michael Pierce having a good run stopper. And, I mean, he ain't no crazy pass rusher. We all know that. But having a good run stopper. Um, Morgan Moses signing their right tackle. And that's probably going to be the end of their offensive line uh, acquiring acquirements. Of, is that even a word? No, that's going to be the end of the guys that they acquire for the offensive line and free agency. I still think they draft some, but um, – because I think they're banking on Ronnie Stanley and then Patrick McCarry probably at center. But um, who else? Who else did they get? That's it, right? I think that's it. Oh, they re-signed Patrick Ricard. Um, so, yeah, n no, no needle movers. Some difference makers as far as Marcus Williams – Morgan Moses, because he's been really healthy. Um, Patrick Carr, he's going to have his role, of course. Uh, and Michael Pierce, he'll have his role. But no no true, like, oh, man, all right, not, that's the one. That's the one. Not yet. Um, I still feel like for Ravens fans, the expectations right now is probably – I say divisional right now, divisional round, and of course, again, you still got a lot of guys that you got coming back healthy. I, I keep hearing a lot of people say, "Oh man, so many fans of the team they they keep underestimating how many guys we've got coming back to be, that are going to be healthy this year." Well, you hope that they're healthy this year. Ravens do have a lot of guys coming back, but even with all the guys that they have coming back, would that be enough to really push them over the top? Would that be enough for the Ravens to really even get to? The AFC Championship, because I feel like that's um, that's a lot of people's. Well, at least mine. When you talk about success, um, that would be my definition of a successful season. Now, of course, Super Bowl ultimate success, but for these Ravens, for how they've been and where they've been recently, for success to me would be AFC Championship. AFC Championship. And, I mean, if you say Super Bowl, that's fine, too. I, I'm cool with that as well. But making it to the AFC Championship. And then a lot depends on the way that it goes from there. If you win, oh, great, let's go. If you lose, how did you lose? How did they lose? How was the effort? How was the play? How was the, the, the play calling? How was the execution? How was all of that stuff, even if they lose? But that would be a successful season to me. We, of course, don't want that to happen to where they get to the AFC Championship and they lose, but that would be a successful season to me. Ravens haven't even sniffed that for a long time. Since, since, this is, since their Super Bowl, they have not sniffed it. Been to the playoffs multiple times. They've been in the playoffs with Flacco. Been to the playoffs with uh, Lamar, but they have not sniffed an AFC Championship at all. They've been one game away, I think, what, twice, right? Yeah. Been one game away from the AFC Championship game twice, but <sighs> couldn't deliver. So, oh, and even, what are they doing in 2014? 2014, I think they, was that the wild card game against the Steelers? Oh, yeah, that was a, the, the, yep, that was a game against the Steelers where they, they destroyed them. And then there was a Patriots game, them two 14-point leads that they blew. Now, that's what happened there. I was trying to remember, but then, I, oh, okay, yeah, oh, I remember now. But, yeah, man. So, how far away are they, though? I think they, they we're still missing, like, that guy. Who is that guy going to be to really get, like, the offense over the top like that? And I know we got some nice guys on the squad, man. And I, but I just wish they would get that guy to add to it to where it's like, oh, oh, these Ravens, they they serious. Oh, they they really trying to do this thing. They really trying to make this happen. Oh, okay. I see what these Ravens talking about now. I don't I haven't seen that in my personal opinion. I have not seen that yet. I've seen it, I've seen it all over the AFC. But I I just I haven't seen it with the Ravens. So um, I think when you ask the question, how far away are they? I think um, their mindset change away. Shout out to Graven.